I'll show you my method of waxing fabric. Typically, when you buy pre-waxed fabric from the mill, they will run yardage through a pool of molten wax and then draw that between two hot rolling pins to squeeze out excess wax. And then uh, there's a cooling period, then it gets rolled up onto the roll. Um, but for doing it at home, you have to melt it and then brush it on or pour it on or dip it. And then the problem with most of those applications is uh, getting evenness, uh, consistency. You, it gets blotchy very easily. So um, what I do is have a mixture of mineral oil and wax, about 50-50, maybe 60% wax, 40% oil, and then melt it, brush it on. To, I use a brush to get it onto the fabric, and then a heat gun to melt it into the fabric. And then to even out the thick spots, I use a screen printing squeegee to and to spread out the wax to even it out and I've got about six seven yards of fabric to do so while I'm waiting for my wax to finish melting I'll go give you an overview of materials and tools I prefer using mineral oil because it doesn't go rancid like vegetable oil does. Uh, brand doesn't matter, just as long as it's a white oil. Um, even even like sewing machine oil would work. It's all mineral oil. Um, but this is the cheap stuff. Uh, I use, I prefer to use beeswax, mostly because of the smell. Um, it comes from a natural source, uh, just straight from the bees. And you can get industrial bees racks that hasn't been purified for really cheap. Um, but you can also use candles. I take the excess wax, chop it off, so that I'm not using up, so I'm not destroying the candle. I just use up the wax that the candle's not going to use anymore, and then I melt that. Um, this one, I'm actually doing a combination of beeswax and paraffin. Uh, the consistency of beeswax is a little different than paraffin. Beeswax is a little crumblier. Um, it is tackier, it's kind of sticky, and then the paraffin is smoother, but crackier, and uh, all together the three of them will create a good combination. Mostly beeswax, a little bit of this, and about half and half, or 60% 60, 60 wax, 40% oil. You can do 90% wax. 100% wax, you can do nothing but wax. You can do mostly oil, a little bit of wax. Um, the ratio is up to you. Um, the more wax there is, the stiffer the fabric will be. Uh, the more flaky excess wax will be. Um, the more oil it is, the more flexible it will be, but the more, oil, more oily it will feel. A 50-50 is pretty oily um, so probably ideal is about a 60 40. Um, as far as the tools this is just a speedball squeegee uh, six inch wide um, but it's it's really thick and stiff there's a little bit of give but you don't want a lot uh, a, a car, a window squeegee wouldn't work. It'd be too flexible. Um, brush, just something something disposable, something you don't really care about, cheap. But natural bristles. If you do synthetic bristles, it's going to melt with the heat. And uh, this is just a cheap Harbor Freight heat gun, 12 bucks, 8 bucks, whatever you can get a deal on it for. Um, I've had this one for several years, so it's not too bad. And then lots of newspaper. Keep newspaper underneath the fabric to keep excess wax from bleeding through onto the surface you're so that's supporting the fabric.
uh, as far as paper is concerned, um, you can use newspaper, any kind of scrap, rubbish paper to keep underneath. But I just remembered that I have painter's paper. Um, this is stuff that comes on a roll three feet wide. You can probably get it in various widths. But it's essentially thick construction paper, um, similar to what you'd play with in, in craft class when you were in an elementary. But uh, it's uh, something you'd find easy at Home Depot paint section used for laying down so you don't drip paint all over junk. Um, but because of its thickness, it'll be excellent for um, absorbing excess wax. For melting wax, you don't actually need a double boiler. Um, it just gives really consistent results. It also, I think it also makes it melt, uh, the wax melt faster. Um, but it prevents it from burning, too. For years, I have just done it straight on the surface of a pan. The way I remove excess wax from paraffin candles is by taking a knife and whacking it with a mallet. You can see a little indentation there. There. When, when you give it a couple good whacks, you start to see cracks split, and then large portions just come right off for melting. I do the same thing for beeswax blocks. Do the same thing for paraffin blocks. Just whacking it and getting chunks split off. As for fabric choice, this is a, a medium weight green twill. Um, it's very uniform, fairly dense. You can hold it up to the light and not see, not see holes in the weave. That's very good. Uh, I prefer twill over canvas just because of the density of the yarns. Um, there's a lot more yarns per square inch in this than there, there, than there is in fabric, just due to the properties of twill versus a plain weave like canvas. Um, you, can, you can wax any number of fabrics though. Uh, smooth, flat fabrics work best. You don't really want to do a corduroy or flannel or fuzzy wool fabrics. Uh, the extra thickness, all the fuzzy yarns, they don't give good results when waxing. So just smooth fabrics, muslin, canvas, twill, denim, uh, etc., etc. So here I am starting to wax the fabric. Before I use the heat gun or the squeegee, I want to get as much wax onto the fabric as I can. Fairly close to the edge. Um, the spots where it's really piled on there, hopefully the squeegee will do a good job spreading it out. Another good thing about the double boiler is that you can take it off the pan and there's hot water in there keeping the wax warm so you can bring it down from the stovetop for longer. If you're just working off the stovetop, you either have to go up to the stovetop to get molten wax or when you grab the wax off the stove, it'll cool down pretty quick. Um, because of that paper back there, I can spread the wax all the way to the edge of the fabric. You know you need to start um, warming the wax back up simply when it starts to thicken, when it gets a skin on top. Um, so this, <laughs> that's going to last a while. It's going to be molten for a good amount of time because of that uh, hot water underneath the pan. So I've waxed about 18 inches across the width of the fabric. I'll stop there, even though my wax is still plenty fluid, um, I can't go too much further, otherwise I'll start waxing my pants.
Um, I also need to see how much the fabric absorbs the wax. Thicker fabrics will absorb more wax, so you need to lay it on heavier. The amount I've laid on might be enough, um, but if it's not, then I need to go over it again to make sure that that's saturated. So now I'm going to start melting the wax in. Um, at first, give it some good heat. You don't want too much heat. If you have a heat gun, it has several heat settings you want on one of the lower ones. If you get too hot, the wax will start to boil. You just want it to melt into the fabric and then move the heat gun elsewhere. Um, it might be difficult for me to show with one hand. I'll try melting wax and then using the squeegee to distribute wax. Okay, here I can see where the thick spots have really pooled. While it's warm, I want to push that out. Not really even, that actually really evened it out nicely. So you want to just go back and forth between the squeegee, the heat gun, spread the thick spots to the thin spots and just distribute, even it out, get it as good as you can. And you'll be left with a fabric that's a lot darker than you started with. That's that's not wet. It's not going to look any lighter than that. It's fairly cool by now. And in comparison, this is what it started out as. It's going to be a lot heavier and stiffer as well. And it'll have that attractive cracked look when you break it in, too. You'll notice when the wax is really hot, fresh off the burner, it goes on real easy, spreads real thin, and <clears throat> even starts to bleed into the fabric on its own without having to use the heat gun. As it cools down, it's going to go on thicker and um, clump up more. The direction you draw the squeegee does matter. Um, you need to draw it the length of the fabric. The warp yarns are more taut than the weft yarns. Uh, when the fabric is woven, there's more tension on the warp yarns, so they're going to stretch less as you draw that across. If you draw it horizontally, um, the width of the fabric, then you're going to get a lot more stretching and warping of the fabric while you're drawing it across. I'm working on the second batch of wax. You can see that this is a lot clearer than the first one. The first one was very yellow, even when fully liquid. This is, you can almost see to the bottom of it. There's that one lump that won't melt yet. Um, but the test consistency between batches, I've only waxed a yard and a half, maybe two yards, with that that last full batch of wax. Um, so to test this new one, and the ones after, I'm going to have to do one or two more of these, I take a small measure, cool it down, refrigerate it, whatever. When it's solid, I test the consistency of it compared to the one I started with which I melted already. 
Um, so I'm just going to have to tell from memory. But it should, uh, I'm looking for something that's slightly creamy. Almost like a salve. Not quite that much. Also, um, the color variation is because this is a freshly melted uh, batch of wax. This is the first time I've melted a bunch of bu a bunch of wax and a bunch of oil all together into this batch. The last batch I had melted several times. Um, something with the uh, crystalline structure of the wax or how it breaks down over time through heat, uh, something like that. Uh, well, it will change color when it's melted. It'll be more opaque. But it should go on, it should look the same when it's on the fabric. Here I have my small measure of wax cooled down. I just pulled it out of the fridge. Still a little bit warm. It's about room temperature now. Um, but it's, uh, it gives me a good chance to see the consistency of the wax when it's cold. Um, this is actually firmer than I want. So even though it looks really liquid, really clear and transparent when it's nice and hot, solidifies to this. It's not very yellow like the wax originally started because it has to cool down all the way and then it'll be pretty yellow. Um, but it, I'm looking for a consistency that's a little bit tackier, that smears more easily. I have to give it quite a bit of pressure for it to really squish down. Um, a little too crumbly. So I'll add some more oil and then give it a start, give it one more try, decide where I'm at, and then get back to waxing. So here's the second time I've tested the wax and it's more to my liking. Um, just feels creamier, not not too creamy. It doesn't smear all over my fingers and make a complete mess of itself, but it's not crumbly. So now the ratio is good, so I'm going to start reapplying it to the fabric. You can see all the fabric I've waxed so far I'm just rolling up. And another thing I want to show you is as the squeegee runs across the fabric, what it's doing is pulling some of the wax on up onto the squeegee, but also pushing it through onto the paper underneath. This is why it's really important to have a couple layers of really thick paper. Um, it'll even bleed through, but it doesn't go through all the way. You'll see some blotches on the back side of the fabric where um, there was a lot of wax that bled through and it's stuck to the back side. That's insignificant. There's uh, not very much actually sticking to the fabric. And if you go over all that uh, again, I'm going to go over all this fabric all over again with a heat gun just to remelt it, make it really uniform, so then I can start cutting it. Here you can see the finished fabric. This is, I, I went over the front side and the back side, make it all consistent, use the squeegee to press the excess wax out through the back side, and uh, what helped the most was actually making sure I had dry, fresh paper on the back. When I had wax waxy paper, it would still bleed up into the fabric. So when I got too much wax on the paper, I'd flip it over, then do some more. When that got too waxy, I'd replace it with new paper. And so you can see it doesn't have, it doesn't have any shiny spots. Um, the horizontal white lines are from the fabric being folded up. And you can see color difference. This is before, after. Uh, when I make something out of it, I will 
finish assembling and then take the heat gun to it, it will remove these white lines and sort of start fresh. So then as I use it, it'll break in and it will get the crease lines showing up. So yeah, that's waxing fabric.